Uh, like the queue now. <laughs> All over 60, 65 years of age, I understand. I heard there's an incentive for that as well. For <laughs> yes, workers over 65. Yes, you're absolutely yeah, well, right. What, yes. What's happened in the well, budget? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the bu <laughs> yes, you've been reading out. Is it relevant for you? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, yes, if you are over 60, and uh, you, previously there were restrictions on the mm. amount of uh, working tax credit that you could claim. Mm. So what the Chancellor has said is that uh, tax credit for workers over 60, mm. you don't have to work 30 hours to qualify, you mm. can qualify after 16 hours. Right. So that's uh, again, you know, I mean, for some people 30 hours might be a bit too much, especially mm. at that age. Mm -hmm. So that is a bit of a concession, I think. Mm. And it's good for those of our viewers, perhaps, who are over that age of 60 mm. and they are having to work all those hours, mm -hmm. well, they can take, uh, you know, relief that at least there is going to be that reduction in hours. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a good sign. It, mm. It's also another sign that perhaps, this is my own thinking on that, mm. that what happens is if somebody is not working 30 hours, decides to work 16 hours, there is then... Uh, a, a job for somebody mm. else, perhaps a younger person, mm. to come in and do some of that work on a part-time basis. And now, leading on from there, we have the new minimum wage which is coming into force mm. from October, mm. and that's going to be £5.93 an hour, and that's an increase of about 2.2%. So people who have got uh, employees, they need to bear that in mind. That there's, there's going to be uh, minimum wages. Yeah. It's going good, to be it's good for employees, but yeah. not good for the employer. No, I mean, I think employers are feeling the pinch mm. because, uh, uh, of course, next year, as I said, mm. the national insurance rate goes up, both for the employees mm. and the employers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's currently 12.8%. It will become 13.8%. So it's, it's, I think it's quite a heavy burden. Mm. But let me tell you something more. There is more which the employers and both the employees will be uh, having to contribute. There's going to be a special fund which is going to be like a compulsory fund, an additional pension which right. both employees and employers will have to contribute in. Mm. Initially it is going to be start with uh, larger employers but I think by 2016 it will become compulsory for every employer that they will have to contribute an additional sum into this, uh, this uh, pension, special pension fund. Mm. And the reason is that people are living longer and longer uh, and of course the government needs to uh, have funds to, mm. pay, uh, to pay for their well-being, well mm. upkeep and also to pay them pensions. Mm. So, yeah. I think you have to have like 30 years of contribution to yes. be entitled to state that, pension. Something, something like that, something. To, 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 the, to, to get the maximum. Mm. Yeah. I'm not an expert, by the way, yeah. on pensions. And really, even on when I mentioned about the tax relief on pensions, mm. uh, people should seek uh, advice from their independent financial advisor, uh, right. who are experts in that, because it's quite a, quite a complicated mm. uh, uh, field. Mm. Yeah. But you can give people advice on avoiding the tax the halal way or avoiding yes, yes, uh, reducing yes. the tax burden that, as much that's as That's right, yes. And the halal, halal way. The halal way, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And I always encourage uh, the halal way of doing things. Mm. Now, you mentioned that, you know, uh, the, in the budget we have what we call the sin taxes. I mean, tax on uh, alcohol. Sin, sin tax, okay. yes, I call it. Taxes on alcohol. I thought they call it that. So well, like it is. Su it is a sin. They actually acknowledge it's a yeah, sin. Exactly. And this is an Islamic principle, isn't okay. it? Okay. Because we are forbidden mm. from drinking alcohol mm. or dealing in any. And this really should be a mm. lesson for our brothers as well. Mm. That look, here we are living in the UK, mm -hmm. and this society even recognizes the evil of alcohol mm. uh, and all these their things. Hmm. And so we should be taking and saying, look, we are not going to be dealing in alcohol. We will not be serving alcohol in our restaurants. We will not be selling alcohol in our shops, hmm. you know, because we are Muslims. Hmm. So this is something that uh, perhaps we have tended to neglect. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, as far as I'm concerned, I might be an accountant, 
but I like to think that we, whatever we do, we should comply with whatever the requirements of our, uh, what you call the holy book are, which is the Quran. You know? Alhamdulillah. Yes. So what's happened? Are they increasing attacks on these yes, things? Yes, definitely it's on the increase. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's been increased uh, this year, mm -hmm. uh, both with uh, tobacco and uh, alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, substantially for people who drink uh, cider, Mm. Uh, gone up considerably by I think 10% above the rate of inflation mm -hmm. and the Chancellor has also said that in the, in the years to come it will be going up by 2% I think above the rate of inflation so mm. yes I think uh, the government realizes the damage uh, alcohol and uh, uh, what you call tobacco does to the health of the individual and in fact the nation and we are having to pay a price for that so mm -hmm. we, as a Muslim society, as Muslims, we should try our, play our role, that we don't deal with alcohol, we should not be consuming alcohol, we should not be selling alcohol, and we should not be serving alcohol. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our brothers I know, they are in the restaurant trade, they should take note of that. You know, mm -hmm. That uh, this is, uh, as far as we can see, this is un-Islamic activity. That's right. I, you know, you Sammy, I, I hope you would... Uh, sort I of, totally yes, agree with you. And yeah. on that note, we're yeah. just going to take a short commercial. Yes. And we'll carry on. We'll talk about the halal and yes. the haram. Okay. So, inshallah, viewers, uh, we're just going to go for a short commercial. And we'll, we'll continue talking to Tahir Beg, the tax expert, after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We have, if you just joined us, you are watching I Mean Business and we're just in the second half with our special guest, Tahir Beg, who is a tax expert. Assalamu alaikum again, Tahir. Wa alaikum as yeah, Thanks for being with us today. You're most welcome. So we, uh, just before we cut off for break, you mm. were talking about the halal and haram and you were talking about um, taxing the sin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't, the want to, tax. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a mufti because <laughs> I'm not. But I'm just saying that really even when we are in business, we should be mm. aware that what is halal for us and what is haram for us. Mm. And what is halal is good for us. You that's know? right. Halal and tayyibah, mm. which what is halal is good for us. Yeah. And that's really what we should be doing. Mm. If, whatever business we do, we should make sure that the business is halal for us. Mm. And, you know, I mentioned about the sin taxes. I mean, the British system, tax system, recognizes that uh, uh, things like alcohol are bad for you. That's mm. why they are being taxed heavily. Because mm. there's a price which is being paid. Mm. Uh, you know, if you go into the hospitals, Friday night, Saturday night, go to the emergency ward, and my son-in-law happens to be a doctor, and he tells me that, you know, it's chaos out there in accident and emergency, and most of it is related, alcohol-related. Mm -hmm. So we Muslims, we need to be sure that we don't fall into that category. And if you are dealing with it, we need to get out of it. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. But you know, <clears throat> there are other opportunities available for us as well. We mm -hmm. mentioned about businesses, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about it perhaps in another program. But there are other halal investments available for us mm -hmm. as well. When we mention ISAs, mm -hmm. these are new uh, vehicles, tax-efficient vehicles, whereby you will not pay any tax on the return which you get uh, from these investments. And some of there are products now available in the market which are Sharia compliant. Mm -hmm. So even if we, when we want to say we want to invest in uh, ISAs, we should look at products which are Sharia compliant. Mm -hmm. So we, we get best of both the worlds, mm -hmm. you know. I know uh, what an ISA is, but mm -hmm. you know, for just for the viewers, for benefit yeah. of the doubt, for those that don't know what, what is yeah. an ISA, is it some tax, whatever, or what kind of, what is it exactly? Yeah, sorry, I'm using the technical yeah. term. It's really a saving vehicle whereby mm. uh, each adult is allowed to invest up to 10,200 pounds now, that's the new mm. limit, uh, into an ISA. ISA is investment savings account. Okay. And whatever you generate from there, you don't pay any tax on that. Mm. And that's what an ISA is. It's set within certain limits. Sure. It has certain amount you can put in shares, yeah. about 5,100, and the rest you can put in a, in a savings account. 
So make sure whatever you do is 